So it's time to replace your operating system drive. Maybe it's getting a little bit full and you want to get something bigger. Maybe it's like starting to go bad, so you want to quickly get all your data and move it to another spot. Well, I'm going to show you the easiest way that I've found, and that's by using a program called Ezus Disk Copy. This is a sponsored video, but they did something really cool because I actually messaged them saying, hey, I'm, I've got to move some stuff from one place to another. You want to do a video? I'll make it into a tutorial. And they were like, yes, and we're going to do one extra thing for you. How about we give you a hundred lifetime keys to give out to people in the audience? So I was like, yeah, that'd be awesome. So there's a link down in the description and a hundred of you are going to get a full lifetime key for Ezus Disk Copy. All right, now let's get down to business and talk about the actual steps of how to move your data from one thing to another. Now, I know there's a lot of different command line and very nerdy utilities out there, and some of you know how to do that, and if you're happy doing that, that's fine, but I find that, you know, even though I know how to do that, I end up using something like this because it's so quick, it's so easy, and having the big visual representations on the screen, it actually makes me feel good because I can like see what's going on with the different partitions and stuff. Now that was to the nerds. Now, if you're not so nerdy, you may think, oh, I can just get a new hard drive and drag and drop windows from one to the other. You cannot do that. And that's because there are multiple different partitions. You got your C drive and you'll see like C, but that's not all of your hard drive. There's extra little pieces for recovery and extra information, boot sector information, and all that has to be copied or else Windows is not gonna boot. And that's why you need a program like this. So in order to do this, to do the full disk copy, you're going to need to install both of the drives in your system at the same time. And these can be any kind of drives. They can be old drives, old spinning drives, big drives, little drives, SSDs, or M.2. They can be any of those. Now, if you don't have an extra spot for an M.2 on the inside of your computer, you may have to get something like this, but these are relatively inexpensive. Now, this is a PCI Express bracket. You just plug it in, put your M.2 right here, and then it's just like having another M.2 slot on your motherboard. Sometimes you might want to just leave it in there and have two M.2s in your system or three or however many you've got. So that's another option. USB M.2 enclosures are not a good idea. That's because the USB protocol is not the same as plugging it straight into the PCI Express bus. So do not use USB unless it's Thunderbolt. That's a little different if it's like pure, you know, maybe USB 4 or Thunderbolt, maybe that'll work. But I'm going to say don't use one of those and I'm not responsible for any data loss. So don't come at me if you did something wrong. I'm gonna explain everything as clearly as possible. So if you have any trouble, just go back and rewatch different parts of this, and I'm sure you'll figure it out. It's not that difficult, but if this is your first time, just uh, pay attention, follow along, and it should be pretty easy. So anyway, we gotta go ahead and get that M.2 installed in our system. That's what I'm using here. So I'm just gonna take apart my little mini computer here, and I've got an extra M.2 slot there. So I'm gonna put my blank, brand new, larger m.2 into the empty slot and we're going to keep the windows m.2 in there for now we need them both in there at the same time once we get that in there we're going to power on the system and then let's take a look and see what's on the screen over here so if you open up your new computer you're going to see like okay i just put a thing in there but it's not there well if you right click on this pc and you go down to manage you can look and see all kinds of stuff now there's another disk in here oh look it just found it i'm just going to go ahead and initialize this and for most modern systems windows 10 11 or whatever even most linux systems gpt is going to be what you want mbr is for old school stuff so there we go now we have unallocated space. If you wanted to use this as a hard drive, you would right click, do new simple volume, and then follow a few steps there to actually initialize this so you can use it as a hard drive. Now here is our C drive. And as you can see, it's broken up into a few different blocks. So this is only a you know one terabyte disk, and this is a two terabyte disk. So we're gonna clone it over there. Then I'll show you how to take advantage of all the extra space that's on this drive. So next up, we're gonna head over and grab our copy of Ezus, and then we're gonna activate it. There's all kinds of different programs on here, and you can try them, but we're just gonna do the disk copy to do a full-on copy. Some people try to do monthly and then turn it off because you don't need it all the time. You just need it once or twice, and you can turn it on and off. But if you do that two or three times, and if also if you forget, I think it makes more sense just to grab this lifetime right here. One license for one computer with lifetime free upgrades. There we go. If you're someone who had a key, well, what you wanna do is click on the free trial, download that, and then put in your key. I'm gonna go ahead click on that and then install it. So when it first opens up, you're presented with this if you, you know, got the demo version. So for you 100 out there who got that lifetime subscription, just paste right here, just paste in your license code. All right, and check this out. 
as soon as you plug it in, because I didn't initialize it, I just put that other drive in there, it detects it and it's like, hey, do you want to migrate to the new drive? Just click on yes. And check that out. It set everything up for us. I didn't have to do anything. It's just moving disk zero over here and it's extending the partition. Because remember, this is only one terabyte. This is two terabytes. So it's moving everything over here and then extending the partition. It's doing multiple operations. So we're going to go ahead and proceed. I don't actually need the recovery, I guess. Auto fit the disk. Yes, indeed. Let's just click on proceed and go through the steps. And that was it. I literally clicked like three things. So I guess that's why it's called ease us. We'll see how long this takes. These are M.2. Now, if you have an older spinning hard drive, this could take half a day. If it's a huge, huge, huge drive, if you have an M.2, maybe just an hour or two. So just leave it alone. Don't turn it off. Go get a cup of coffee. Go have a meal. Go read a book, watch a movie, whatever. And we'll be back in just a little bit. Or maybe not. I just looked away for two seconds and it's already like it's already doing a lot. This is not going to take long because M.2 and I don't have much installed. So I'll just wait. Okay, that only took five minutes and 50 seconds. But again, I've got an M.2 in here. Your time may be over an hour, depending on your disk or multiple hours if you have an old, old hard drive. This is just so ridiculously easy. So now we have some cool options here. You can adjust your boot order. So it'll actually tell your computer to boot from the new disk instead of the old disk. Or you can go and do it yourself. I normally do it myself, but I'm curious. Let's just see what happens if I reboot. And we'll see if it decides which drive is the right one. Well, this doesn't matter so much for SATA drives or older spinning disk hard drives uh, that plug up to SATA or even old school IDE ports. But on the new M.2 boards, sometimes you'll have multiple different M.2 slots on your motherboard and they're not all created equally. Maybe one of them is going to be PCI Express 4, but they allocated some PCI Express lanes elsewhere. So the next one down is only PCI Express 3 Gen 2 or something. So it's a little slower. And I like my new drive to be the fastest one. So I generally just switch them around. Now, if your motherboard doesn't need that, or if you know the speed of all your different slots on your motherboard, that might not be something you want to do. But it's really easy. It's the same thing we did in the beginning. You just switch them around or whatever. If your hard drive slots are the same speed, your M.2 slots are the same speed, then just you can just keep it where it is. And then you can maybe wipe the old drive and use it as storage. All right, so we're back in. Let's log in. Never thought you'd see Krimuth again, did you? All right, we're back. Now, I'm just going to open up my computer here, and it worked. That's it. There it is, and there's the old drive. So before we go, I want to take another look at EaseUs just to show you around a little bit, because that copy was so easy. So right here, you can see that's our old disk, because it's about one terabyte. See, just under one terabyte right there. These are all the partitions on that. Got a lot of partitions. We don't need this anymore, but, you know, it's there. We're running on disk one right now, which is 1.86 terabytes which is you know basically two terabytes that's our new new drive so yeah and it says right there boot it tells you all this information which is great that's our system that's our boot the status on these nothing so you can come in here if you wanted to just copy one partition to another partition you can do it that way just copy like one thing to another but we're not going to do that so and then the last thing you do is create a bootable boot disk but mainly i wanted to show you how easy it was to just copy a full disk it's ridiculously easy all right now i'm going to exit and come back over here to Windows. And if you right click on this PC and click on Manage again, we'll be, we'll be back here. Now click on your disk management right there. And there's our two different disks. We can get a little scary right here. So now we have disk zero. If you want to clear this off and use it for something else, again, look at the different sizes. And remember disk zero was not our system drive. This is our system drive. So now we can come back in here and start formatting and deleting these partitions. So you can totally do that. These are your recovery partitions and you cannot delete them from in here. So if you want this 100 megabytes back and this one gigabyte back, we can get that back. Just leave them there and ignore them. They don't show up. When you open up your system, they don't show up here. Those are just, they're just gonna be there. They don't show up. You can right click here, click on format, do NTFS, change the name now because it's, you know, second drive. There we go, just call it second. Do a quick format, leave this on default, NTFS, hit okay and format it. I'm not gonna do it for the video, but you know. All right, a little bit of extra credit for the nerds who want to be able to wipe everything on their old drive. Now, this is not recommended unless you really know what you're doing. What we're gonna do is hit start, type CMD, hold control and shift, and then click on it. That will open it as administrator. Now, once we're in here, we need to get into our disk partitioning program called disk part. So just type disk part, press enter, and now we're in disk part. Let's make it a little bigger so you can see it. Now I want to list disk. 
and it shows our two different disks there. So you probably want to wipe your old one just completely, right? So let's go ahead and select disk zero because that's the smaller old drive. And now we can list the partitions that are on here by doing list part. There's all the partitions. Now, if you want to completely wipe all these partitions, just type clean. Press enter and that'll wipe everything. You're gonna have to reinitialize this disk and then set up some new partitions. I'm not gonna do this disk because I'm actually going to take the two terabyte out of here and use it somewhere else. I was using it here for demonstration purposes, but you know, let me go ahead and switch over to that one. So now I've selected disk one, which is our two terabyte drive, and I'm just gonna wipe everything on there, so I'm gonna type clean. There's different versions of cleans that rewrite your drive, but I just wanna get rid of all the partitions so I can start over. This will get rid of everything. It succeeded in cleaning the disk. All right, we're done here. I can close this. Now check this out. As soon as I did that, Esus was like, hey, there's some updated information. It's gonna detect that there's an empty drive in there, I bet. And look at that, it just said, hey, we found a new drive. So now I'm not gonna mess with that. But I think that's really cool that on the fly, it'll pick it up and be like, hey, see, it's not even showing up in here now because I have not initialized the drive. So how do we initialize that drive? Well, let's go back to our computer here. You wanna right click on this PC, go to manage. Then over here on the left, click on disk management and there it discovered it. I wanna do a GPT partition table, hit okay. And there it is. Now we can right click and do new simple volume. Just go through this, assign a letter if you want to, give it a name, whatever. I'm using NTFS, all this is default, quick format, hit next and you're good to go. I'm not gonna do that here, I'm gonna initialize it elsewhere, but yeah, that's pretty much it, we're good to go. All right, so let's say you decided not to um, let EaseUs choose your boot device and you need to do that yourself. Or maybe something happened and I don't know, you unplugged your computer, uh, whatever. I'll show you how to select your boot device yourself. It's gonna be a little different depending on what system you have, but let's go into the UEFI and get that done. We're gonna reboot our computer, hit start right over here, and I'm just gonna do a restart. There we go. Now I'm gonna start spamming delete. If you're on a laptop, sometimes it's F2, but we need to get into the setup menu or the UEFI menu or the BIOS menu. It's gonna have different terms depending on what system you're on. But yeah, I'm just pressing delete and F2 and delete and F2. There we go. And here we are inside the UEFI. This is a fancy one, very fancy. So I'm gonna click on setup over here and I'm gonna to need to change my language, aren't I? Ooh. All right, so here we are in the UEFI. It's so easy, you just come over here. Well, it's gonna look different depending on the computer. So if you just click on the boot area, so you can see we have two different options, Kingston and Nexto Rage. Now those may or may not show up in your boot options. Right now, only my main one is showing up. So there it is, that's the new one. But if you see both, just pick the one that is, you know, correspondent to your new hard drive, that's it. Click on save and exit. Save changes and exit, hit okay. And that's it, you'll boot up into your new drive in Windows. I wanna read right, this is the easiest disk clone that I've ever done. And I've done a lot of disk clones for a lot of different systems. I've used command line, I've used different programs. This is literally the easiest I've ever done. So I guess it would be funny to say that I did this video to get you all those 100 keys for the lifetime you know, subscription or the lifetime version of the, the program, but also got one for me, so yeah. That's, now you're all like, oh, that's why you did the video. But yeah, I wanted to help everybody too, but <laughs> that lifetime key, and now 100 of you are gonna get that. So go down to the description and get one of those 100 keys while they last. So, and, and for everybody else, now you know the easiest way to clone a hard drive is by using EaseUs Disk Copy. It's been a few years since I used it. I didn't expect it to be this, this easy. Like I expected to have to do more tutorialing in the tutorial, but it was just like, click, yes, and it's, I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting to have to do a few more things like, oh, how many partitions you want to move all the, no, it was just like, it's easy. It's really easy. They earn the name ease us. Okay. All right. That's the end of the video. I'm surprised at how easy it was. I tried to <laughs> make it a bigger video, but really you just go click yes, yes, yes. And you're done. All right. Again, check the descriptions for all that stuff. Let me know what you think. I'll see you in the comments.